Okay, let's do some lettering. In both the creator level and the designer plus level you've got quite a few lettering tools the designer plus level does have one extra so in your toolbox you can come down to the box specifically for lettering and monogramming and expand that out and you'll see that there's a basic lettering a monogramming tool and those of you who have designer plus will see the keyboard design collection tool now I have done separate videos on that, so I'll put the links to that below. So in these videos I'm going to mainly just look at the lettering and the monogramming, which both Creator and Designer Plus level have. So let's start with lettering. Now I'll just, there are two ways to open your lettering dialog. The first one is if you left click, you can then click on your screen and start typing A B C okay that will allow you to type whatever the font was loaded into the object properties before you started you need to press enter to um, create the stitches and then you'll have those letters all in the one box even if you go into individual items they'll all be in one box because lettering works differently they're not separate objects at this point in time okay now that's the quick and easy way and it's usually the London font that is the default so if I right click on that and go to object properties that will take me to the lettering tab no, it hasn't actually, so let's um, go to the lettering tab. Okay, that when you're in the lettering tab, you can see all your options for lettering. So as I said, the London font, which comes with the software, is listed here. Now, in version 9, you also have the range of sizes for the lettering, and then you will see an example of what you've typed up here. Um, next to that as well in that font. So this is the box where you can enter or edit your lettering that you've actually typed in. And if you haven't got a character on your keyboard, there are some characters that you can select individually from a chart. I'll get to that later. Below that is a filter, um, and that relates to this font section here. So this font section is um, can be expanded and you have got a sliding bar and uh, there might be a few less fonts in the creator level. Um, there's some 3D fonts which are to do with puffy foam so they're specialized fonts for that they're right at the beginning and then if you come down your fonts will be in alphabetical order so it starts with Abbey Script and Alice and so on and once you get the, you'll see there's little zigzag marks on the left. That means that these are already digitized in uh, for embroidery, um, so you can use them straight away without any worries. They've been tested, so they will stitch out beautifully. Now there's a lot of size ranges and a lot of fonts included in your software, so just go through and see what you've got. This is the safest way to do lettering is to use one of the inbuilt fonts. You know you're going to get a good result. If you keep scrolling down past all of the fonts um, and then in version 9 Designer Plus you'll have the uh, keyboard mapped collections, then below that you'll start coming into true type fonts. Now these are all the true type fonts um, that are installed on your computer. So if you have a program that included fonts with the program, those fonts will, such as a drawing program or a WordPress Word um, document type program, and it includes fonts, they'll be listed here. And they're also in alphabetical order, I think. Yes, um, after you get past those whatever they were at something, um, then you get into alphabetical order. So I've got quite a few fonts because I've got quite a few programs on my software that came with them, plus I've downloaded and installed some fonts. So you can also install true type fonts or open type fonts into your so into your your into onto your computer and when you restart your computer 
and open the software again, they will be listed here with the true type fonts. Just get down there again so you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Okay, so they'll be listed here. This is a tiny weeny one. Now these ones will be digitized on the fly. So you will type them in and do them just the same as lettering. So you'll choose the font um, and the software will digitize it as best as it can. So the results may or may not be satisfactory depending on the font. Some fonts digitize better than others. So you just need to try them out. Um, as you get used to um, using different fonts, you will realize which fonts are not going to work very well at all and you will not bother using them. Um, generally, these blocky type fonts, although this one does have some very fine lines in it, but um, ones that are evenly blocked work best. So that, as I said, that's up to you how you do it. Now that's using the lettering tool. And if you don't want to just get the London font, um, let me just click off that so that disappears. Um, as oh, before I do that, I'll talk about this filter. So if this is a very long list, as you saw, so if you don't want to see all of the fonts in that list, you can filter it to just show the embroidery fonts or just show that keyboard mapping set that belongs to Designer Plus version 9, or just the true type fonts. Additionally, when you're in um, the true type fonts, you can then continue to choose between decorative script, serif, and block, and that will help filter out the type of um, fonts in the true type fonts. So you've got that filter to make your list a little bit shorter. Um, the true, because I've got so many true type fonts, <laughs> my list is still long. But if I go back to the embroidery fonts, um, and just want to look at the embroidery fonts, I can then expand that, and you will just see the embroidery fonts. You get down to the end of that list, and that will be it okay so use your filters to make it a little bit easier for you to find the font you want now if you as i said if you don't want the basic london font when you type instead of left clicking on the lettering tool if you right click on it it will open up the lettering dialog for you on the lettering tab usually if everything's going well and so, as I said, you can type your A, B, C, or whatever into this box here. Um, let's select a character while I'm there because I did mention that button. So if your keyboard doesn't have all the characters that are included in that font, you can find them by um, clicking on select a character and you can go oh, put them in true type so we can see them nice and clearly. So for instance, um, let me think of one that wouldn't be there. Actually, all the oh, some of these with the um, accents on them, you might need one of those. So you could choose that. Let's just choose that Y um, with the double dots. So if you're working with other languages or um, anything like that, you, where you need these accents, etc., you can select them here. You can also select all your normal letters one by one here too, but why would you? You would use your keyboard where you could. Um, I think most of these would have a keyboard. You'll also notice if you look very closely underneath um, these characters, the key, key on the keyboard that actually selects these characters is shown in very small um, options here. So for instance, I think that's a forward slash and I think that's a minus, that's a period or full stop in Australia. Um, that's a forward slash. So that couldn't have been a forward slash. Maybe that's a comma. Um, so you just, if there, if there was one here that didn't have a keyboard, um, oh, they've all listed, but you may not have those on your keyboard. So you would just select them. So if we go OK now, that Y with a double dot is now showing at the end of my ABC here. 
Now I can choose my, let me go, I've got only embroidery fonts, so let me choose an embroidery font. Let's choose this one, the monoglycerin. And that's as far as I'll go now. There's all sorts of other options here, but we'll just go apply and OK, or I could have just gone OK. And then you need to click somewhere on your desktop for it. Oh, it's actually select, created this box. That's weird. Oh, that font might not have that particular letter in that font. Um, so it substituted something else. So there you go. You need to use a font that has the character that you're selecting. So perhaps you should choose your font first. And let's just go back now and do that again. Um, so I'll go to the lettering tool. I'll right click on it. So this is good reinforcement. And so I'll try and find a character in the monoglyceride. So we go um, select character. And let me see, have they got any letters with accents? Yes, they have. So, um, but they, yes. So if I choose one of those, let's choose this A with this accent here and go OK and go OK. It's showing up here. Let's go OK again and let's left click. And sure enough, let me go to true type so you can see. Sure enough, it's come. So yes, select your font first before you select any unusual ca um, characters because you might get an unexpected result.